It's PowerCon time. This is a show that is very special to me. I have been to every single PowerCon since they first started. Of course, as many of you know, PowerCon started out as mostly a Masters of the Universe themed show. Sometimes it included Thundercats, sometimes it included Ninja Turtles, but Motu has always been sort of like the driving force. But I have watched this show evolve over the years from a small little gathering at a hotel to this massive toy convention that is now all compassing of all of the toys out there. Toy companies, toy properties, you name it. That's what this show is all about. This is the second year in Columbus, Ohio, and it's already like doubled in size, if not more. So I'm very excited about this. Now, this is a very busy show for me, uh, not only because I have a table to help promote my brand and sell the Motu book, but I also help out at the show a lot. I do things like help to organize and I MC the cosplay competition. Uh, I am on several of the panels at the show. So needless to say, it's a very busy weekend for me, which actually leaves very little time for toy hunting, but I'm gonna squeeze in what I can because I wanna do some toy shopping. So just so you know, most of the footage you're gonna see here is stuff that I was able to shoot either before the doors opened or at the very end of the show. I still found some cool stuff and I think we're still gonna have some fun along the way. It is almost the first day of PowerCon. We got the table all set up. I am super excited. I'm definitely gonna get out here and do some toy hunting when I can, but I gotta just start this thing off by saying how amazing some of my friends are. My buddy Brandon, who you guys probably remember from Manor Monster Studio, he hooked me up back in like March with some awesome, super shiny Batman figures. And he started the show by doing it again with super crazy shiny Robin, but then he totally one-upped it with this insanity. I mean, are you kidding me? I got both the Ninja Force Bushido and the Shadow Ninjas Bushido carded. What a great, what a great way to start the show. This is amazing. My friends are so cool. So now I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna do a little bit of hunting before the doors open and PowerCon begins. Everybody's still kind of setting up, but there was one thing that caught my eye as I was walking up and down the aisle, bringing things to my table. Um, and that is where I'm gonna start. Oh, hey, how you doing? good, how are you? Good. I was over here admiring all your stuff yesterday. Oh. I actually wanted to know what the price was on this. $12, too. so these are all bags that we make Oh, seriously? Store, yeah, it's all stuff that... <gasps> Can I get that from you now? Is Absolutely. that okay? Oh my gosh, yes. 12 bucks, all in. This is Solitaire, one of the Jewel Lords from the Rock Lords line. And it's the only Jewel Lord I still need. I've had the other two for years, but I have been trying to track down Solitaire for so many years. Behold the Jewel Lord, Solitaire, Flamestone, and Sunstone. Jewels so powerful, Magmar will stop at nothing to possess them. <laughs> and so the nastiest new Rock Lords, Spearhead and Saberstone, are sent to capture them. Time to polish off the new Jewel Lord. Polish this, Saberstone. Boulder! Rock Lords, powerful, Each separately new from Tonka. <laughs> She's pretty obscure to come by, and the few times I found her, she's been a little out of the price range that I wanted to pay. And here she is, baggied with a few other extra goodies for only $12. I know that this is the first find of the entire weekend and the show hasn't started, but this right here has the potential to already be my find of the weekend. I am thrilled. There's also some incredible customs at this table. Nutcrackers, they're so good. I know, I thought this came out so great. And that's another thing that I love about PowerCon. Uh, independent toy makers and custom toy makers are always a plenty, and their talent blows me away. I only wish I had more time to see more of them at the show, but I did make sure to stop at a few of them, starting with my buddy Scott's table from Barbarian Rage, where he is showing off his first ever vinyl figure called Berserker. Toy. Um. Dude, they're so good. Thank you. 
I wanted, you know, the idea behind it was to make it as plain as possible so I could just like customize them. Into an yeah, show. yeah. And, um, but it was killing me to not put any detail. Oh, like and, a, you know, like in the sculpt. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm done. And I'm like, you know what? I think I need an underwear line. My wife is like, it looks like he's wearing tidy whities <laughs> That's how they're supposed I'm to look. Like, look. It's supposed to. I'm like, I'm going to put the loincloth over it. Look. <gasps> These are so good. I also stopped to see my buddy Frank and his incredible musculoids line. Now, I've done a few videos on these wonderful weirdos. They are amazing beefed up vinyl figures, and he's got several new designs on display here at PowerCon. The vinyl is so great, too. Yeah, I really. I wonder about it. I don't yes. really know. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot, but that's awesome. I think that's great. No, it's got to be good, right? Yeah, of course. The character <laughs> selection is awesome. Yeah, this guy's amazing. Holy cow. Okay, look at Eternia of Dreams. Look at these guys going all out for this. So this is this is the main entrance. These doors will all be opened up. This is where people will come in. And the first thing they're gonna see Attention is this. So Eternia Dreams is always a big draw at PowerCon. They always bring a massive booth, and this one here is nothing but Masters of the Universe. They actually have a second booth on the show floor with other toys, but they went all out with the Masters of the Universe product. And of course, I've got to stop here to see these guys. They've always got so much stuff that I want. Oh man, Turbo Tormentor. 40. I don't have this. Oh, and I don't have Rocket Disc either. Oh, man. Crap. <laughs> the show hasn't even started yet. Okay, Eternia Dreams has got... Oh, my God. This is only 25. These are those Imperial. I love the colors on this one. Yeah. There's so many good random 5.5. Some of these guys are custom. Like, that guy's, that guy's definitely custom. But, like, some good ones here. This guy, keep running into this guy everywhere. Oh, there's more up here. Oh, so I have this one, but look at the colors on him. 18. Here's the rhino, and he's got a saddle. 15. Oh, this bird. Oh, the phone. Let me, let me get this guy out. Look at this guy. So this is from uh, Arco's other world line. He is really cool. I got to get him back in there. There we go. God, that's so cool. Oh, there's a carded combo hero. Oh, these are good. Look at that, look at that little heat man head on that bootleg body. <laughs> oh. So this Turbodactyl over here is only 190, which is one of the cheapest I've seen it so far. So it says chipped tab. I wonder what that means. And the reality is, is like I just need this headpiece because mine's broken. Dang it. Dang it. Alan from Eternia Dreams ended up explaining to me that that one Turbodactyl with the lower price has broken clips under the head. So that's the head doesn't really attach all the way. Um, so I, I'm not there yet. I'm not finding my replacement Turbodactyl, but it's going to come at some point. We're definitely going to have to keep hunting. But man, Eternia Dreams, I'm definitely going to have to come back here before the end of the show. And they really did bring out the big guns again. I mean, I'm looking up. I'm seeing Titus and Megator. I'm seeing a boxed Eternia playset. I'm seeing a Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle. Oh my gosh, that's unreal. And as I'm about to head back to my table because the show's gonna open, I soon stumble upon a table that is nothing but stuff from Argentina. 
and they've got a whole bunch of Fuerza T figures carded and loose, as well as a bunch of Top Toys Masters of the Universe figures. Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> but it's time to get to work. I now have to be at my table, which is where I'm going to spend the majority of the weekend. And it doesn't take long before amazing viewers of my content show up. And man, the generosity is unbelievable. Like I said, I thought you needed a Motu. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's even got the like sparkle of like the holograph, uh, yep. the sparkle yep. effect. I saw it on the photos and... Of course, he's got to have the sparkly He's got to have a... Oh. And the picture I found, he had a belt. So I That's figured right. In my, in my mind's continuity, you want it from the rock figure. There it is. <laughs> oh, my God. This is incredible, dude. Fantastic. And I got video coming out on it. That's actually what they're filming for. Oh, perfect. A perfect. Video for it. This is incredible. That was a thank you. For, oh, my uh, God. You put me in the video last time, and I got, That's like, right. 100... Oh, you got a bump? Subscribers. Oh, I so love I appreciate that, it so much. No, that is And so, so this is like a thank you for that. So hopefully it'll work again. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's right. That's right. Go subscribe to this guy. Yeah, actually, I need to get a photo. Let's do it. Oh my God, dude, the glitter and everything is like, it's tripping me out. I love it. Oh, wow. That's incredible. I, I just can't believe it. A custom of my Spencer Powers persona it just blows me away. Look, it's one thing that I got my first ever official action figure and it's based on my pro wrestling persona. Look, if you would have told me when I started the pro wrestling journey 20 years ago that eventually I would have an officially licensed action figure that people would be buying, my mind would be blown. But on top of that, people are making custom action figures. I just, I can't believe it. Like my heart is so like, full. It's unreal. This is just such a cool moment. A little light of things. It, it lights up? Yeah, the blood. What? This is insane. A viewer by the name of Jared made me an incredible mosquito themed slime pit. And it actually will hold the guy in there. And it actually is going to like pump. You can actually pour it in there and just stick it in there and just kind of push but, it. Like the little baster in there yeah. and then like it squeezes the, oh yeah. my God. I tried so many different ways to get it to work at least somewhat properly. <laughs> this is insane. Look at the mosquito head on the front. Oh yeah, I changed that. That's not mosquito. That's, you know, mosquito now. And we got, uh, and the, oh yeah, the Hordex in the back. Oh, I love the little control panel and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. There's a brain and a hand. It's really cool with the little creatures that you see in the... That's insane. Uh, so, so. What's uh, What is inside of like the... Literally soap and uh, food coloring. Oh man. This, I, I kind of had an idea because I know the mosquito has the black also. Yeah. So it was like the idea of like, you know, the, the blood, you know, by them, you know, sucking it out of the figure, the, you know, the good guys goes into here and then comes out black. Oh, wow. That, dude, this is amazing. It's like a little switch right there. Wow. Little things on the bottom there. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Dude, holy cow. <laughs> holy cow. I'm just seriously completely blown away by the details on this thing. I've met so many amazing people over the course of the weekend and we'll definitely be showing off a lot of the cool stuff at the end of this video when I'm going over my haul. So stay tuned because I definitely wanna give proper shout outs where I can. Okay, I know you probably can't tell by this video, but a lot of time has now passed. In fact, an entire weekend of PowerCon is drawing to a close. So now we're at the end of the show, things are starting to slow down and it is finally time for me to get out there and do some more hunting. I barely got to see the show floor. I feel like this video is not gonna be a proper representation of what was being offered on the show floor. So I do apologize for that, but come with me. I promise we're still gonna go see some more cool things.
wow, a Masters of the Universe voice action playset. You know what's wild? I've had that Castle Grayskull bracelet there in my collection for many years. Now I know what it came from. Belt Medallion plays four different messages. That's so awesome. And this table of dinosaurs caught my eye, but immediately I was drawn to what's behind them. A Pog Milk Cap Maker. Newsflash, it's a Pog Milk Cap invasion. Milk Cap sightings are pouring in by the thousand. The cause is anyone's guess. It's the official World Pog Federation Milk Cap Maker. For the first time ever, you can make your own milk caps. It's cool, because it's totally easy. Just load in the picture, line it up, twist, and bam! Make the world's biggest, coolest collection. It's a Pog Milk Cap invasion. And in the weather. The official World Pog Federation Milk Cap Maker from Cap Toys. Who else? Guys, I had this when I was a kid, and I don't think I could properly state to those of you who didn't live through the era just how popular Pogs were for like a summer. <laughs> but I was just as wrapped up in it as anybody was. It's funny, I relate it to things like my son got way into those poppets like a year or two ago, and they were like the big thing for like a minute. That's exactly what pogs were in my era um, back in the, a summer in the 90s. This milk cap, cap maker was a very fun toy that basically allowed you to use a picture or a magazine or anything like that, and it would cut a perfect circle and adhere it to a milk cap so you can create your own pogs. I love that thing. I made tons of pogs with it. I wonder what happened to that and to all the custom pogs I made. Huh. Oh man, they also have an Etch-A-Sketch animator. I had that too. Man, this table is total nostalgia overload for me. Whoa, check out these amazing custom Motu Origins figures and heads for Motu Origins by Lee Customs from Instagram. He did some really amazing things here. There's lots of filmation style characters. And what I really love is he's got all these custom heads that are based on some of the various vintage knockoff lines of Masters of the Universe, all set to fit on your Origins bodies. These are incredibly cool. And speaking of amazing customs, I stopped over at the Fans of Power podcast table to check out some of Joe Amato's awesome customs. He does some really unique pieces that are really cool to see in person, but none of them are as good as Cookie Monster. <laughs> He's definitely my favorite. Oh, it looks like we found some more heavy hitters here, specifically for Masters of the Universe. Carded Scareglow is always cool, but look at that carded vintage pig head from the Sunman line. And there's two of the rare new adventures figures, Two Tall Hoof and Hook'em Flog, or Brack as he's called outside of the US. And the Tower Tools, Scuba Attack, and the Cliff Climber, some very cool accessory packs from the tail end of the Masters of the Universe line. Join in the adventures of Masters of the Universe. From the black depths of the sea, Skeletor strikes with a scuba tech gear. But E-Man puts on tower tools. You're too bold, big breath. Scuba tech, tower tools. Next time, he's mine. And cliff climber power gear. Help E-Man in his fight for Eternia with Masters of the Universe. He-Man, now with a free Adventures cassette. I thought it was interesting over there, they got a sealed case of Bionic Tops and a sealed case of 48 Screeches. Seriously? Yeah. Oh my god, where's that at? <laughs> you wanna see? Okay, so I got the tip. So I had to run over there and check it out for myself. I believe this was the toy department and they sure enough have two vintage Masters of the Universe cases. One of them is a case of Bionatops. There are six of them in the case and they're selling that case for $4,000. So that's roughly around $670 per mint in box Bionatops, which is about what those would sell for on their own. So that is pretty cool to see it like in the case still, wow. 
but even wilder to me is this massive case with 48 screeches in it. Yes, an entire case with nothing but screech, 48 of them. And the price for this case was $1,500, which seems really cheap to me. That puts these at roughly a little more than $30 per mint in box vintage screech. First of all, it's mind blowing to me that Mattel was shipping cases that big with just one figure in it. Wow, that really tells you the popularity of that original toy line. But also $1,500, just over $30 per vintage screech. I gotta be honest, I stared at this for a very long time. I really debated it. I had a pretty good weekend and suddenly spending $1,500 on 48 vintage screeches didn't sound too crazy to me. Though I sat there doing that thing like, what would I do with 48 of these? But the allure was really there. In fact, as I'm putting this video together, I'm debating it again. I am really wondering why I didn't pull the trigger on this. Why didn't I buy 48 screeches? Dang, this is something that just doesn't come along every day. Why? What do you mean, but why? Why do you need that many screeches? Because they're, they're vintage and there's like 48 vintage screeches. And that's a... Where are you going to put them? Well, that's, that's not anything we have to worry about. I just think it's a good the, price. It's 48 the, vintage screeches. I, I feel like if you're going to buy 48 vintage screeches, you need to figure out where to put them. Get out of here with your logic, Stina. <laughs> Go away with your logic. I want 48 screeches. Whatever you want. <laughs> okay, okay, so I didn't go for the 48 screeches. Maybe I'll regret that, we'll see. But they also had some other very cool things that they showed me. For example, they had a test shot of Vintage Leech. I love seeing test shots like this, especially for the Vintage line. And on top of that, a test shot for Stridor. This stuff is incredibly cool to see in person. Different one that was made for video stores. We bought this one from a Kenner employee. And as far as we can tell, this version was given to people that worked on the toy. The really? Toys the TV show. Wow. It came it's from like, a Kenner employee. It's like, uh, like the hollow foil thing going on yeah, there. It's like shiny. Cool. That is awesome. Man, and now we're at the point where the show floor is closing, so I think that's gonna be a wrap, but we have a whole lot more video here, so stick with me, because I have got quite a haul from this event. But I've gotta say, PowerCon was an absolutely amazing weekend. I got to spend a weekend just hanging out, meeting so many incredible people, viewers of my channel, friends, old and new. I got to experience the sale of my first ever action figure. I got to meet with other like-minded individuals and just geek out together over the things that we all love. PowerCon is an amazing experience and I love shows like this because this right here is what the hobby is all about for me. If you ever have an opportunity to attend PowerCon, do it. It's such a good time. And I would love to hear about your experiences as well from your end, because I feel like the show's got so much to offer. And I know I was pretty much stuck in one place for the whole weekend, but for me, it was a weekend like no other. And with that, my friends, it's time to get into my very big haul from PowerCon. And I'm gonna start with all of the very thoughtful gifts from many of my viewers. I'm always gonna do my best to make sure I give proper credit, but in the moment, 
Sometimes it's hard for me to like get everybody's names. I always try to write names down where I can. So if you are somebody who gave me a gift and you see it here, feel free to shout that out in the comments because I wanna make sure that proper credit is given. Let's get into it. I was given this amazing mosquito art by a young fan and it's incredible. I love stuff like this. I was handed these amazing prints of awesome figure photography from Brian of Endless Fables. And this awesome Files of the Minotaur coloring book by the artist Brad. I was gifted this awesome Toy Box Time Machine book, which is essentially a bunch of fake advertisements for fake toys that didn't really exist. Kind of like those ads you would see inside of comic books, this is a really cool book. And another book that was given to me by the author by the name of Jonathan. This is Articulating the Action Figure, Essays on Toys. Definitely can't wait to read some of this. These amazing posters for fake toy lines, Teal Steel and Mutation Fixation were done by Tom and they are incredible. They're meant to look like those old pack-in posters. And these awesome Saturday morning art cards given to me by Stevie Draw Stuff. I was also gifted this awesome Mosquito card from the Motu card game. This was gifted to me by my friend Motu Joe, but this game is created by the awesomely talented Ken Coleman. He's doing an entire game of this, so definitely look it up. I got these incredible custom-made Masters of the Universe themed tarot cards given to me by David. And I was given this awesome handcrafted battle cap magnet that was made from clay. This amazing 3D printed 5.5 dude is in the three and three quarters inch scale. How cool is that? I was also given this 3D printed mosquito gun. This was done by Crackers Props and Prints on Instagram. He's 3D printing a bunch of incredible stuff. This mosquito gun is awesome. I was also given a green mosquito head by Lee Customs, whose booth we checked out earlier in the video. Now this head is inspired by the vintage Yugo bootleg. This snaps perfectly onto the Origins body and I can even do comparison time because I have a vintage Yugo bootleg here. How awesome is this? This is the amazing custom Spencer Powers figure on the Origins body style uh, given to me by the incredible Make Shape Create. Go check out his channel. He did a video on this as well. I am seriously, I know I already said this, totally blown away. It's an amazing custom. The details are incredible. Thank you so much, my friend. I was gifted this gold Cobra armor that was done by Black Major Customs. Uh, this was bought from Totally Rad Toy House, which is where I found the silver one. This was bought for me by a young fan who saw my video where I said that I wished I had bought more of these. And then he happened to be at Totally Rad Toy House, so he bought me another one. How incredibly thoughtful. I was also gifted this amazing vintage sewer spitting lifeguard Leonardo figure. Now I never had this one as a kid and we had this conversation about that extra piece of plastic on his foot. He was wondering if this was some sort of weird mishap where there was a chunk of the plastic mold in there, but this is actually part of this figure. If you look closely, he's stepping on a bottle of suntan lotion and this is on all of the sewer spitting figures. I never had this one in my collection before, so I love having this now. I was given this amazing custom Ninja Turtle done as a mashup with the Dick Tracy figures. This was given to me by Toy Hills Toy Collection on Instagram. Make sure you check him out because I think this is such a wonderful mashup. I was also given this amazing custom Krang action figure that was done in the style of Mutant Mayhem. So even if we didn't see a Krang, this is a really cool like Mutant Mayhem styled version of the figure. I love Krang, so I love this.
My buddy Rodney gave me a box filled with some 5.5 weirdos, as well as a vintage Masters of the Universe slide puzzle. And one of the dealers also dropped off this Galaxy Warriors figure. Love this line, of course. Uh, an amazingly friendly viewer even gifted Christina this Vinylmation figure of Woody, which is one that she did not have, so she was thrilled to get it. And I was gifted a Big John Stud Thumb Wrestler. I used to have a bunch of these Thumb Wrestlers when I was younger. This one is incredible. I was gifted these My Pet Monster cuffs for my smaller My Pet Monster plushie. You guys might remember I was gifted that plush by my friend Craig from Not Another Retro Channel a year or two back, but it didn't have the cuffs. This viewer brought me these cuffs. These are from his childhood collection and his monster pet has been gone for years, but somehow he still had the cuffs. So he wanted me to have them to complete mine. I was just so honored for the, having these. I love them and I'm so happy to have my pet monster finally completed. I was also gifted this amazing ceramic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh, this is vintage. Probably was unlicensed, probably sold at hobby shops, meant for painting. This is incredibly cool. I was gifted a bag of goodies from Sean over on Patreon, uh, who gave me these awesome Galoob Star Wars Micro Machine heads. These are like the little heads with the little figures inside, very Mighty Max style. And he also gifted me my very first Wildcats figure, which I think he just sent me down the rabbit hole. If you've been watching my toy hunts, you know I've been tempted by those for a while. I've got my first one now. I guess I might be in. <laughs> I also got a big box full of stuff from a very generous viewer named Michael. Here's some of the stuff he gave me. He is a huge fan of Small Soldiers, so he gave me my first two Small Soldiers figures. I got Archer and Chip Hazard here. I've never owned any of these before, so it's pretty cool to have these in the collection. But he also gave me this hilarious bootleg Chip Hazard. How cool is that? Speaking of bootlegs, he also gave me these awesome Masters of the Universe style Mexican wrestlers. And he gave me these X-Bots robot figures. Then he gave me this Garbage Man figure from the Zen, the Intergalactic Ninja line. This is a great line. I actually did a video on these like way back in the beginning of my channel. So like it's an ancient video, but it's a great toy line. Um, this guy here, he pointed out is definitely very similar to Muck Man from Ninja Turtles. And uh, then he asks me, if I had the new Mattel exclusive Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes dolls. And he proceeds to hand me these two Barbies. <laughs> Which, uh, I mean, kudos. These definitely resemble Cody and Brandy. Hilarious. Thanks, Michael. I love all this stuff. You guys might remember back in one of my Ohio toy hunts uh, at a store. I was there with my friend Kevin and I saw this amazing uh, vending machine display for bootleg meteorbs and I was gonna buy it and I got caught slipping cause Kevin bought them before me. Well, he felt bad after watching my video. He was at PowerCon and he found another one and he bought it for me. So we've come full circle and he totally didn't have to do that, but I love this. Now I've got my very own bootleg meteorbs from the vending machine, so cool. Uh, a viewer also has been really digging my hunt for G.I. Joe Ninja Force figures, but decided it was time that I got into the Eco Force figures. So he got me an Eco Warriors clean sweep. And this dude is amazing. And he's very cool looking. Love the bright yellow colors. Also love that mustache when you pull off that helmet there. Really rad figure. I guess I got Eco Warriors now. And speaking of, uh, here are the figures that my awesome friend Brandon gave me. I got a carded Ninja Force Bushido, and I finally got my first Stealth Ninja, or Shadow Ninja Bushido figure. 
I love these so much. So happy to have these carded. Really happy to add these to my collection. Of course, Brandon also got me this very shiny Robin action figure and a Blanca from the G.I. Joe Street Fighter line as well. D13 Toys stopped by and gave me two figures from their Biblical Adventures line, these awesome PowerCon exclusive demons in these very candy looking colors of translucent red and green. These are pretty cool. And the folks from Spy Monkey Creations gifted me their three new figures, all with a very heavy Masters of the Universe influence. But they also gifted me their Abominations figure named Shakath, who's like a big beast figure. And as you can see, has quite the Snake Mountain theming. These are incredibly cool. And my buddy Ben who does the Galaxor toy line, gave me his newest vinyl figure named C-Rex, who is just an amazing looking figure. Definitely check out Galaxor online. And you saw me over at the Musculoids table earlier, so I grabbed two of those new figures. I got the amazing green snake-headed dude with the skull in the mouth, and I got this awesome white and blue colored Frankenstein Musculoid monster. These are so fun. I love them. And of course, that amazing custom Mosquitoor style slime pit that was gifted to me by Jared. I continue to be in awe of just how incredible this amazing playset is. And we're not done yet, because while I was over at Barbarian Rage's table, I did buy one of the new Berserkers vinyl figures, which are just so incredible. I could not pass up the one that he made that looked like Scareglow, because of course not. So that one came home with me. I love this figure. I also went back over to Eternia Dreams and I bought the New Adventures Turbo Tormentor and the Rocket Disc Power Pack. I have never owned these. In fact, the first time I saw them in person was when I was doing photography for the book. Uh, the packages are kind of in rough shape here, but still really happy to add these to my collection. There was so much more at Eternia Dreams I, I could have bought that I should have bought. Dang it. <laughs> I guess another time. And I'm calling this my find of the show. I picked up Solitaire from the Jewel Lord segment of the Rock Lords line. I can't even begin to express just how happy I am to finally add this figure to my collection. It's one I've been hunting literally for years and she looks so good standing next to my other Jewel Lords figures. Man, look at how shiny and beautiful they are. <laughs> I absolutely love these. And there you go. Wow. Massive, massive haul. But thank you to every single person who stopped at my table. Not just the ones who gifted me stuff, which again, you guys never have to do that, but I'm so appreciative of it. But every single person that came by and interacted with me over the course of the weekend, thank you. You really did make that weekend incredibly special for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show if you were there. If you didn't get a chance to make it, I hope you consider checking out PowerCon some point in the future. Um, you know, my good friend Val runs the show. I do a lot of uh, help where I can at that show, uh, but it's something that I'm proud to like be a part of. So really, really cool show. And guys, thank you again for watching these toy hunts. I really, really appreciate it. Special shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon and all of you who are subscribed, who continue to comment, who continue to hit the like button. Thank you guys so very much. Happy hunting. And until next time.